Welcome back, everybody. The White House continues to change its story about the domestic abuse allegations against former aide Rob Porter. Spokesperson Sarah Sanders now blames the Personal Security Office for failing to act. She and other White House officials previously blamed the FBI for not finishing its background check on Porter. That story, well, it unraveled on Tuesday when FBI Director Christopher Wray said the Bureau repeatedly briefed the White House last year on claims that Porter had abused his two ex-wives. Well, for more on this, Peter Matthews is a professor of political science at Cypress College and Michael Genovese is the president of the Global Policy Institute at Loyola Marymount University. Thank you for coming in. Glad you took care of your keys. Okay, <laughs> okay so keep in mind what the FBI director said to lawmakers on Tuesday morning. Hours after that, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, she was at the podium for the daily briefing and she gave her version of events regarding Rob Porter. As I said, um, and I'm going to repeat what I said earlier, uh, that we'd learned of the situation involving Rob Porter last Tuesday evening, and within 24 hours, his resignation had been accepted and announced. We announced a transition was going to happen, and within hours, it did. Um, and in terms of timeline, I don't have anything else to add. Uh, so, Michael, someone here is not telling the truth. Um, and for my money, it's chances are it's not the FBI director. Well, you know, the Trump's own appointment of Chris Ray, they, they busted the White House. And these changing stories, it, they shouldn't surprise us because this is what they've been doing. There's 24 seven cycle of high drama. They keep tripping over their own high drama. And if you just look at the turnover at the top of the administration, if you look at George W. Bush at this stage, no one left the administration. Obama, one person, Trump, seven. So you've got this combination of inexperience, and a revolving door and an administration that doesn't really put a high priority on the truth. And this is what you get. Mm. And, and it, it made them look terrible today. Which, uh, by, in comparison to other days when they just looked awful. Uh, Sarah <laughs> Sanders did try to explain why the White House version of events is so different to the FBI's version, is what she said. The White House Personnel Security Office, staffed by career officials, received information last year in what they considered to be the final background investigation report in November, but they had not made a final recommendation for adjudication to the White House because the process was still ongoing when Porter resigned. Uh, so Peter, when in doubt, blame a good old career <laughs> official, a tradition as old as politics itself. I mean, even if that is true, who's going to believe it at this point? As if that's a valid reason in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's such an incompetent White House, too. Everything that Michael says is true, but on top of that, the inexperience shows clearly, not just in domestic and foreign policy, but in the White House policy. It's unbelievable what's been happening here, and it's just another manifestation of Trumpism. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's, it is Trumpism. Yeah, on the one hand, but it's also Kellyism, I guess you could call yeah. it. A lot of this is going back to the White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, um, how he has handled this from the beginning. It's believed he must have known about these allegations uh, long before he is admitted to. Um, and essentially, this is again Sarah Sanders um, on basically the way John Kelly has, has handled everything and what he knew and when he knew it. Is the White House still maintaining that John Kelly really had no idea about these allegations of domestic abuse until this story broke? I can only give you the best information that I have, and that's my understanding. So a clarification and a question. In July, when the FBI was sent back into the field to get more information, are you telling us that no senior staff, not Don McGahn, not Joe Hagan, not John Kelly, nobody in the senior staff in the West Wing was involved in that decision to tell them to go back and see if they could get more um, information on what Again, was I, I can only, not that I'm aware of, I can't say with 100% certainty, but uh, not that I'm aware of, of any conversations uh, okay. between those individuals. Okay, so very quickly, add to that, um, when the Wall Street Journal asked John Kelly if this self-inflicted crisis could have been handled better, Kelly answered, no, it was all done right. So, Michael, yeah, normally it's the president who's the source mm -hmm. of upheaval and drama. John Kelly is the person who's meant to calm everything down. He's the adult in the room. Mm -hmm. That is not playing out. Well, no, we all expected him to come in and be the grown-up in the room to bring some chaos some order to the chaos, and even some order to the president, which was a big task. Turns out that he's an enabler, he is a true believer, he is promoting Trumpism, and he's feeding the very worst aspects of the Trump personality. Instead of controlling them, he's basically putting fuel on that fire. Yeah. There's something else I see here, and that is the uh, total male chauvinism that comes out among these staffers, including Trump himself, when he says that, you know, uh, Allegations, the mere allegations. Mm. 
and he tries to praise Porter for an exemplary uh, employee uh, career. You're still looking at the person's talent in terms of his employment, but not looking at his character, his personality in terms of how he views women, what he's done with women. So that's, to me, uh, epitome of, sh of chauvinism. Which seems to go to Michael's point because they've got so few decent staff members there that Porter was seen as someone who was you know, mildly competent, uh, which is why you know, Kelly apparently, one, one theory why Kelly went, you know, has defended him. Uh, amid all this controversy, the intelligence chiefs were on Capitol Hill um, before the Senate Intelligence Committee. They all insisted that measures were being taken right now uh, to try and prevent Russia from meddling in the midterm elections in November. But listen to this exchange. We're taking a lot of specific efforts to blunt uh, Russian directed effort. by the president. Uh, not, not as specifically directed by the president. Okay. Uh, Director Pompeo, have you received a specific presidential direction to take steps to disrupt these activities? I'm not sure how specific. For us, I can't say that I've been explicitly directed to, quote, blunt or actively stop. Uh, and, and Peter, I don't know why, uh, but... <laughs> that, that answer surprised me. I, I probably shouldn't have been, but to have the president not involved in, in, in directing the intelligence chiefs to take any action just seemed gobsmacking in some it's ways. It's incredible because he's the person in charge of security of this country, and we believe in democracy that has to be not interfered with by foreign sources in any way. So whether or not it happened in 2016, he should be proactive in leading the government and saying it should never happen again. It compromises our whole democratic process. So strong leadership should be coming from this man, but you can see him waffling and wavering and not even giving direction to his own people to be careful about this. Okay, we've got to move on very quickly because there's some CNN reporting we have now uh, about the version of events surrounding the payment of $130,000 to the adult film star Stormy Daniels. Uh, she allegedly had an affair with Donald Trump several years ago. Uh, last month, Trump's longtime personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, he released a statement on her behalf. Uh, in part, it said, this is uh, Stormy Daniels talking. Rumors that I've received hush money from Donald Trump are completely false. Well, apparently they're not, because Cohen has told CNN the money was actually paid for uh, to Daniels, and it came out of his own pocket. He wrote the check. Michael, how many lawyers do you know would shell out $130,000 for their billionaire client out of the goodness of their heart? Let's, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, none. 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 Exactly. Um, no, this is this is story, a story that is so beyond bizarre that it, it it's past the point of absurdity and how humiliating this must be for everyone involved or should be. But why isn't it? Why isn't the president humiliated? Because he's had all these accusations against him and that's part of what Peter was saying about you know, they, this character issue. This is just normal business for those folks. For us, it would be outrageous for almost anyone. It would be outrageous behavior and yet in this White House, it's okay, it's another Wednesday. Well, in case anyone is curious, Stormy Daniels, she is taking her Make America Horny Again tour uh, <laughs> to Palm Beach in Florida uh, and a strip club just blocks away, about four miles actually, from the president's private club, Mar-a-Lago. So there we go, keeping it classy in Florida. Peter? And um, making money off of the situation. That's like a Trump modus of Vivendi. I think that's what they do. All of them that's do that. That's what this country Make money to. through politics, through any story that comes up that's negative, just make money out of it. Make it a positive. Okay, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Amazing. The new normal, right? <laughs> Actually not. Okay. Peter and Michael, good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. The new normal? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs>